Hello, my name is Bryce Tubbs. With me today is Dr. Laura Ellick. Um, you know, Dr. Ellick is a New York and Florida licensed psychologist with almost 20 years worth of experience working with children, teens, and adults with issues such as eating disorders, anxiety, depression, and mental illnesses. And she's a speaker and a life coach and a business consultant and has been featured on TV, video, you know, channels speaking about mental health issues. And she works with VIP clients athletes and performers from around the country. I'm super excited to be able to share this conversation with you today. You know, thank you so much. Good for- morning, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Excellent. You know, what was life like before you got into this field and really what was the catalyst that brought you into the field? That is a fantastic question. I was attracted just as a very sensitive child, attracted to kids who had issues. I was always the kind of kid who watched those after school specials on TV about kids with drugs or kids with parents who were abused. Those were the kind of books that I read. So originally before I knew about the field, I wanted to be a social worker because that's all I knew and I wanted to work with abused children. And then I went to college and on my freshman dorm hall, my floor, six out of 18 girls had currently had or had had eating disorders in the past. And I'm like, whoa, that is, that's one third. And it's just on my floor. Um, so it was at that point that I shifted focus a little bit and decided to focus on eating disorders. So that's how it all started. Wow. That's crazy. I wonder what, what the statistics are like nationwide. That's oh crazy. my gosh. Yeah. Because so many people with eating disorders, you don't know, you mm-hmm. know, it's, there's a lot of shame surrounding it. So the numbers are probably a lot higher than we even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm asking you this. So, um, you know, what are some un, unexpected reasons why we struggle, why people des- develop these disorders? I think with any disorder that somebody struggles with, anxiety, depression, eating disorder, addictions, you know, the way I like to describe it to all of my clients, and um, I think this is a really good visual too, because they kind of get it. Like if your ability to cope with the world is here, but let's say your stress level has all of a sudden gone up to here, you now have a gap between what you can deal with and what's reality. And in that gap is where we develop symptoms. Uh, the kinds of symptoms we develop really based on genetic history. You know, so there is a sort of an interplay. So we know, for example, families where there's a lot of addiction, you might be more likely to have bulimia, for example, or families where there is a lot of anxiety, you might have more OCD, you might have more anorexia. Uh, so everything is kind of connected. And, and what's interesting right now with the way the world is, is everybody has reached like that point. You know, we are all at the point in time where being in quarantine and the chaos and everything. So we're seeing like huge increases in, of numbers of, of all different kinds of people seeking mental health treatment and they might not have done it before. Mm. Let me ask you this question. So how do we start to close that gap? So you're talking about from where you, where you can handle to where you are. To where you are. I think it starts really, really early. And there's a generational component to this too. I know the generation prior to mine was not really big on emotions and coping skills and, and things like that. It was sort of like, you just kind of, you know, do what you need to do. You don't complain and that's it. As we've gone along, we've become more focused on helping kids have more of that, what they call that emotional quotient. So, for example, with my kids, I've worked with my kids since they were very, very young on developing coping strategies, even though they didn't know that's what it was. So it was things like teaching them, for example, oh, it sounds like you're angry. Is, is that what it is? Is that anger that we're talking about? So teaching them to name the emotion first of all, and then teaching them, okay, well, you're feeling angry. Kicking the wall is one way of dealing with it, but like, what else could we do? Um, so you start really, really young, hopefully, um, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that this particular generation that we're seeing coming up has had parents who are a little bit more psychology minded so that they're going to do much better. I think they're much more likely to go to their parents and say that they're struggling than previous generations were. Mm. Or, or Kylie Jenner or the Kardashians. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, exactly. that, that's the other thing, right? Because now we have millions of parents. Right. So that's right. similar too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a, it's a tough time right now. So everybody's struggling. So parents themselves, if they find that they don't have the coping skills that they need themselves, how are they going to teach their kids? Yeah. Yeah. They come to you. Exactly. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Exactly. Um, no, let me ask you. So, hmm. So, what happens if you don't, if you didn't develop them young, right? So, a lot of the people watching are probably, um, you know, mid to late 30s, early 40s, maybe close to 50s. How can they start to develop those skills? Is it first an awareness or what? First of all, I just want to tell people it is absolutely never too late. Um, I have had people call me who are 70 years old and I say, come in, it's not too late. You know, with the life expectancy now, 70 year olds could live for quite a long time. So we're looking at quality of life here. So the first thing I want to get across to people is it's never too late to look for help. Second of all, there is help available and it's a lot more available than you would think it is. Um, there are professionals all over now, of course, online, people are doing things. But I think, I think you made the point that awareness is the first thing. Knowing that you're having an issue, knowing that maybe your appetite is off, you're not sleeping as well as you used to. Things that you know used to be fun for you are no longer fun for you. So recognizing when you are at the point where what you've been doing doesn't work. You may find that you're drinking a lot more, maybe smoking more pot. So some of the things that you want to look at is, okay, can you do anything different from what you're already doing? A lot of times exercise is a really good way to get some of that stress out. And it, it's a really good coping strategy. Um, it will help you sleep better. It will help your appetite. So if you aren't doing any exercise, that's usually one of the first things that you can start with at home. And it's a fantastic coping strategy. There's also a lot of good apps on the phone now that are for meditation. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say I'm horrible at meditation. Like <laughs> I'm terrible at it, but there's an app where really the shortest meditation is three minutes. And even I can handle a three minute meditation and it really works to help calm the mind. So those are two places where people can actually start and you really don't need a professional to do that. You can go ahead and you can start it on your own and then see how you do. What's the longest you meditated for? Oh, uh, I have done a 20 minute meditation on a candle flame. And I found that to be amazing. What does that mean? Like waiting until it burns or focusing on that? No, just focusing on the flame of the candle and the different colors. And yeah, it was, someone taught it in a yoga class. And that was probably the most engaging meditation exercise I've ever done. I had, I had a guy um, on, on the show a couple, probably like, like a, when quarantine first started. Mm hmm he did 30 days in a row of three hours of meditation a day. Wow. I was like, what? I was like, one, how do you have so much time to just time. do that? Like when you're seeing clients, man, we got to boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, but for people who do it, they often say, you know, it becomes part of their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So they block that time out, whether it means they get up really early in the morning or they stay up a little bit later. Um, yeah, for, for me, I don't need that much to saddle myself, yeah. but I definitely know I need it. Yeah. Now, you know, now let's say that they, some people have the awareness. Choosing, okay. choosing to actually go through with what you know you need to do. Mm -hmm. People struggle with that. Do you have any skills for it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it just willpower alone, but almost like commitment to doing it. Do you have any tips on that? Sure. I think that's one of the most difficult things is making the commitment to yourself to actually follow through. And that's motivation. And one of the things that's really difficult is when you're feeling depressed, you literally have no motivation. So you're sort of working against your biology at the time. So we talk about always doing 1% shifts. That's small, small, small shifts. So even if that means for somebody who's really depressed and in bed, just getting up and taking a shower, that could be monumental. 
Um, because if you add up all of these 1% shifts, eventually you'll get to 100%. Um, so a lot of times when we're feeling anxious or we're feeling depressed, we're also really down on ourselves. And we have the feeling that if we don't do it or go in whole hog, we shouldn't do it at all. And what I'm saying is, is start the smallest way that you can start and build on those success experiences. Because each time you do something, your confidence will grow like, hey, I can do this. And that, I think, is what's really important. You can build on your previous success. Now, let me ask you this. So just kind of switching gears and winding down, you know, what's the vision for your life? For my particular life, I am in a huge growth process right now. I'm super, super excited. I just got a new website up at www.lauraelic.com. So I'm getting ready to add all kinds of um, information on there. I'll have a store on there. My first book is on there called Total Wellness for Mommies. And I'm really excited because my second book called Wisdom from the Universe is coming out probably this month it should be out. Um, and my goal now is really just to, as long as we're allowed to travel, um, is to get around the country and to really speak to people. And again, my message is always, it's not too late. You can start early and I would love to start you early with your kids and empowering children. But you know what? You're 70, you're 60, let's empower you too. It's not over. It's never over. So my goal is to get that word out to people and to help people shift their lives in a fairly quick way. So, you know, I'm going to do it in larger audiences, whether it's by doing video, TV. I like the in-person energy. So that's kind of my goal. Um, I'd love to be at MSG one day. Um, that's a nice place to give a talk. So that's hopefully where I'm headed. Nice. Cool. Uh, so can you give, where can people go to either view the website or view your books or buy your books? Sure. So they can go again. The, my website is www.lauraelic.com. You can buy my first book there. My second book will be available, um, again, sort of near the end of June. There is a place where you can sign up for um, my mailing list so I can get you all of the juicy stuff as it comes out. Or people can just reach out to me if you have any questions or you have any comments or you're looking for information. You can email me at lacwm93 at verizon.net. Um, and I'm pretty good about getting back to people within 24 hours. I try. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'll tell you about that afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, so last question, then we can um, wrap it up. You know, what is success to you? Success is about an attitude. It's not about the amount of money that you have in the bank. It's not about how many toys you have. I think we're all put here on this planet for a purpose. And your attitude is what's going to carry you to help you fulfill your purpose. So, um, and it's not just being positive, um, but not realistic. It's being realistic, but knowing that you have the grit and the determination and the positivity to make your goals happen. Nice. You know, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. And you know, for those watching, if you have been looking for a place where people are improving themselves every day and helping others do the same, I recommend you go check out our free community. I'm gonna put a link out there above or below the video. It's a community where people are coming together and forming a mastermind where we uplift and support each other every single day. So if that's what you have been searching for, go ahead and join us inside of this community um, by clicking the link out there above or below to learn more. I cannot wait to see you inside and help you out. Now, hopefully you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed creating it. Feel free to hit that share button so other people can get some great value as well. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. We're done recording in three, and two, and one.